Good morning and a very warm welcome to today's reflection on Psalm 77. My name is Vicky Syme and I'm a reader at Holy Trinity Formby. I will begin by reading the psalm. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favourable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. The way was, your, was through the sea. Your path through the mighty waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. There are times in life when you pray for a situation or a person and the prayer is answered quickly and how you want it to be answered. Just last week I was in a meeting where one of the members just couldn't remember a name of someone and she was so frustrated by this I felt for her. At the end of the meeting, we prayed, and I added privately my own prayer that she would remember. When we'd finished, the first thing she said was the person's name. That was quick, I thought. But then there are times when it doesn't matter how hard or how often you pray. The exact opposite happens. Recently, a good friend of mine went for a job that seemed perfect for him. It felt like God was making a clear path. The seeing of the advert, the application process and what seemed like a great interview. But right at the end, it was a no. We were all shocked and confused. It just didn't make sense. And of course, there is huge disappointment for my friend. But thankfully, he has a solid faith and he trusts that God will lead him to something better. But it is really tough for him. At least he had a definitive answer, even if it wasn't the one he wanted Sometimes when we pray, it feels like God isn't there at all. It feels like your prayers are rebounding back at you. In times like these, it's natural to start to think, where are you, God? Are you even listening? Don't you understand how much I want you to sort this out for me? Perhaps in your frustration, you start to shout at God. And despite the shouting, nothing. How infuriating. It feels like to me that Psalm 77 is very much like this, certainly in the first part. The psalmist could even be shouting, where are you, God? In his frustration and with a troubled heart, he asks several questions. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favourable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end of all t for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Well, the answer to all these questions is no. But God's silence is powerful and so frustrating. His silence leads us to doubt. Even the psalmist doubts here. And in this world of instant answers, we especially struggle. In the absence of answers, we need to take a step back. Salah is a word used by the psalmist to mean pause, and pausing is a really good thing to do when you don't hear an answer to prayer. Time to reflect on your prayers and their motives and direction. What are you praying for and why? 
When we pray, it's rarely in isolation. It can often be contrary to the prayers of others. An un unanswered prayer in the positive for us may result in someone else's prayer being a no. There is a balance here. In Pete Gregg's book, God on Mute, he says there are 15 reasons for unanswered prayer that focus on three different areas. God's world and the way it seems to work, God's will and the way it interacts with free choice, and God's war and the cosmic struggle between good and evil. There is so much to be considered here, and this is just a reflection, so there really isn't time to go into any detail. But I recommend that you read this book because it really is a great book and it helped me to understand why God might not answer our prayers. But if we go back to our psalm today, the psalmist, despite his doubts, his worries and shouting, he pauses to remember and reflect on God's power, majesty, love and care. He pauses to take a different approach. He remembers what God has done for him, for him and he remembers what God's character is like. He sees that whilst he doesn't understand, he knows that God is a God of love. And this enables him to trust that even when God isn't tangible, he is there. In times like these, I like to hang on to the words of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope for a future. We might not know the plan, but we have to trust that God knows what he's doing. And we must remember that even in the midst of trouble and unanswered prayer, even when God treads unseen, he will lead us by the hand to safety. Knowing who God is helps us to understand why sometimes when we pray, there is silence, that we need to wait to take a different approach, to pray differently, think differently. And that when we're faced with a no or a maybe later, that his plan for us may be very different to what we want or we think we need. But it is a plan of hope and a plan with a future, whether it's in this world or in the next. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great day. I hope you take care and I wish you every blessing for today. See you soon.